Today we're gonna to be doing a how-to video on candy and one of the most popular candies and I think it's probably one of the better ones to do is taffy. I run a freeze-dried foods business in Idaho and I produce this channel for more and more people that are getting into the freeze-dried foods business. So whether you're currently running one or you're just getting started, a lot of my videos are here to help you. Saltwater taffy changes its texture. I've got a picture of what it looks like once it's freeze-dried. It changes its texture from a chewy candy to a textured like malty ball that the flavor hits you immediately so it's really popular there's a couple of pros to doing taffy one is the texture changes to something that's new and visually appealing to your customers so the experience for them is going to be new and fresh so it changes from its chewy state to a more malty ball state so the flavor hits you immediately now the cons as I'm going to show you is a little bit more time consuming but I'm going to show you today the process process that I do for cutting. There's different methods that I've seen using scissors as well as a knife and I'll show you why it's so tedious to do taffy. Now although you can find local places to get taffy, I do find that there's some quick ways to get them online. One is Amazon, two Taffy Town, as well as CandyNation.com. These three places vary on price and shipping time frame, so it's gonna be up to you on what you would like to choose. I haven't noticed too lack of quality in all three of those, and they have different flavors available. So. Go ahead and look those three up. I've included a link in the description of all these three places where you can find the taffy. Now there's a wide variety of flavors that you can choose from. My suggestion to you is to select a few, try them out in sales from your local farmer's markets or maybe online, whatever your channels are for sales, and look to see what your customers are buying the most of, and then just continue doing those flavors. Some of the more popular ones that have been successful for me is huckleberry taffy, peppermint, watermelon, blue raspberry, and I haven't tried cotton candy, but I've heard from a lot of the freeze-dried forums that cotton candy has been phenomenally popular, so you might wanna try that. Another option to include different flavors might be to have a different flavor of the week or the flavor of the month. That might be a great marketing strategy for you is to change it up every single month and then provide different type of flavors so that you can gauge the interest of your customers. All right, so for the settings for the freeze dryer before we start cutting the taffy, is you wanna set it to candy mode. It's very simple with the new software. So you're gonna select the customize button, and then you're gonna turn up the temperature to 140 degrees. That's the temperature that I've been using the most. This changes to dry mode to fast. You're gonna save, and then you're simply going to start it and see how it says high temperature mode. That's candy mode. You're gonna simply press start, and now it's going to cool a chamber. I don't really know why it cools the chamber because we're gonna be using the heat, but that accomplishes what we need for prepping the freeze dryer. So what should we use to cut taffy? Well, there's two cutting methods that I think have been working the best for me, as well as I've found through research of other forums that have worked well for other people. There's really no easy way to do this except for using a knife. I've got a knife sharpener so that we have a really nice blade and cut. And then also these is a cut coat scissors. I really like these, they're durable, and they really cut well and really make sure that you're getting a good cut each and every time. So now we're ready to cut and get the taffy on the tray. Now I've got a large freeze dryer, so this is a large freeze dryer trace, but whether you have a small or a medium or a large, the same process and technique and cutting can be applied. You just need to figure out the arrangement that would fit on the trays for you. I cut the taffy into quarters and I can put seven across and then I go 16 down all the way down here. That's 112 individual pieces. That way the taffy doesn't touch to each other and it creates a perfect circle uh, ball once it's freeze dried. Now through my process as well, I've counted the number of pieces that can fit on the tray. So I, like I said, it was 112. That means I can put 28 pieces of taffy on this tray. You could probably fit more. It just depends on what you'd like to have as the finished product. I like having them come out with any imperfections so that it's a perfect circle and it doesn't look like it was touching any of the other taffy. The reason it takes so long is you have to unwrap every single one. It does not work, I've found, if you leave the wrapper on and then put them onto the freeze dryer tray and cutting, you can't really cut it that well. So I have found that if you have the taffy hard already, maybe it's coming from a controlled environment where it's not impacted by heat 
or maybe it's coming from the freezer, you can cut it down the middle and then the wrappers actually come out. So I've unwrapped these with my fingers. Let me show you how it is if I cut it with the wrapper on with the knife. Okay, cuts down there and then you kind of like pinch with your fingers and it pops out of the wrappers. Now that could be just as effective as you want it to be, but I have found that just simply unwrapping all of them and then cutting can be a little bit faster, just depending on the temperature of the taffy because the stickier the taffy, the less likely it's gonna pop out of the wrapper once you cut it. Now taffy is popular I'm finding. I actually posted in one of the Facebook forms for freeze dried candy makers about taffy because I was headed to an event and I just never really saw much sales from taffy. And people just said, you know, you need to have samples. People need to try it. And believe me, once I had that holiday event and I had people sample the taffy, that was my top seller. So I think over time, just like freeze dried Skittles, people are going to be more and more in tune with what freeze dried taffy looks like and also tastes like. So then I think it'll actually sell a lot better even this coming year. As you can see, it does get kind of messy. I'm gonna show you the camera kind of down here too. Like I've done this before in, in my kitchen table when I was in cottage food and things, and it just gets super messy, it's sticky, and you have to use a scraper to kind of clean it up. So it does get a little bit messy, so that just be aware of that. You can cut these in half, you can cut them in quarters, it's totally up to you. But I am gonna cut some that are in half, just so you can see what the size difference is like once we get done with the cycle, and I'll show you that. There's really no easy way about going about this. This is what everybody's doing. I've actually tried to find taffy in bulk where I don't have to unwrap it. It's not the case, you can't find it. So you, you do have to cut these all with a knife. All right, so we're done with cutting all of these, all the taffy sizes, and these are cut in quarter. All right, so let's use the scissors. These are Cutco scissors and see how it does with these. Now, if these were soft, I think it'd be a totally different story because, but because the taffy's hard, you know, I'd, I'm, not, I'm not cutting or squeezing this super hard because I just don't want them to fly everywhere. As you can see, I'm, I am putting a lot of pressure, but that's cutting it in quarters and they're flying all over the place. So, you know what? I'm not even gonna do these very much with the scissors. I'm gonna use the knife to do the rest of these. So I would say for future use, if you're gonna use these Cutco scissors, make sure your taffy is a little bit more soft and I'm sure these would actually be better than the knife because it wouldn't stick to the knife. It'd actually be really good with these scissors. Now, if they're cold, then I would use the knife. So let's go ahead and do the rest of these and I'll put it on a time lapse real quick. So now for the arrangement, we're gonna arrange the taffy so that you can see exactly how I arrange it on the tray. I'm gonna do seven as a row, and then I'm gonna do 16 columns all the way down with all these taffy. I'm done doing all the arrangement, and it turned out to be 13 rows of the taffy just because I arranged it basically on quarters and with the halves. If I just did it on quarters, I'd be able to do 16 because it's a little bit closer and they're smaller. All right, let's put it in the freeze dryer. The cycle is done. Let's take a look to see what taffy does when you put it in the freeze dryer. All right, let's take a look and see what the saltwater taffy looks like freeze dried. It turns into this egg shape. If you take a look, huckleberry taffy looks like this. And we got the blue raspberry. These were quartered, if you remember, and these were cut in half, so a little bit bigger. Now the reason this makes a difference is one, you can probably fit more of the quarter pieces in a bag 
that you're using versus halves. So I like cutting it in quarters, but these all look great. Hey, why don't we try some freeze-dried saltwater taffy? So here's the blue raspberry. See how the te texture changes? Now it's super malty. The flavor hits immediately. This is really a big hit. So when you're doing freeze drying as a business, you wanna ensure that you have proper storage for your freeze dried candy. I found that these five gallon buckets right here have worked really well. And what they have is it has a, a lid that actually creates a great seal around it. If you can see it's rubber, has a rubber gasket. And when you close it up, it spins and becomes airtight in here. So with freeze drying candy, normally it's really a short shelf life. So I don't really do a whole lot of candy building up in terms of inventory and stocking up in these buckets. I use this for short term storage. So let's put some product into this bucket so you can see what that looks like. All right, so we're gonna unseal the bucket, get that lid off. So for trays when you're doing just very little or you want to store a smaller amount of candy, what I like to buy is these hefty jumbo bags. They're 2.5 gallons and they really do well with all the candy and sometimes just temporarily getting these bagged up and then I eventually put them into the storage container. So let's go ahead and put some of the other flavored taffy in these bags. So we've got our blue raspberry and I slide it just right into the bag. And what's great about, you don't need to use the silicone mats for the taffy. They slide right off as soon as they're dry. Peppermint. And let me just slide all the peppermint into there. Perfect. A couple left over that we gotta eat, duh. All right, so now that we've got the freeze-dried taffy stored up in the bags and the bucket, I'm gonna show you how to package it. Now, I'm only gonna do one tray's worth of packaging just so we can see how many bags we get out of the product. Remember, we took 28 individual taffy wrappers and we cut those onto a tray. So I'm gonna put them into the bags that I use. I don't have them Stanford labeled, but I'm just gonna show you that I use these craft bags that are food safe, but they have a window. They're for short-term use. I don't market them as long-term storage. Now, the reason being is because with the window, it is susceptible to more oxygen coming in and also um, it is susceptible to heat. And taffy I've seen really go bad, meaning it just shrivels up and goes back to more of a liquid, sticky gooiness uh, within a couple of weeks. So you wanna make sure you're mindful of that when the heat comes around in the summertime. Now, I'm, I really like these bags, um, I've used them a lot. You can find the link in the description for these bags on amazon.com. So let's go ahead and package them up and let's see how much product we get out of this. So I've got a food scale here to weigh the net ounces. I usually put about 1.5 to 2 ounces of product in this. Okay, it's zeroed out. It's about 0.3 ounces. And then we're going to do the blue taffy. I normally have my label on the front and on the back for the ingredients. You just use the ingredients from the taffy that you bought. Now that's 1.3. 1.5, there we go. So now these are cut in quarters. So as you can see, it looks a little bit more full. That's the way I like it. So that's one bag. Bagging is sometimes overlooked at how much time it takes to freeze dry and run it as a business. So when you're, when you're getting ready for, for those of you who do shows and things like that, it's a lot of work. I mean, as you can see, when we did the taffy, you know, cutting all that, that took over an hour to unwrap, cut, put it in the freeze dryer. Plus you got all the cleanup from all the remnants and crumbles from the taffy. Let's see, 1.4, 1.5. So that's three so far. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get um, another bag, but I'm gonna say that 28 taffies gets me three bags of product so far.
Hey, that's a wrap on freeze drying taffy. If you found this video useful, go ahead and hit the like button on the video. Also, if you'd like to support me and my channel, I'd love for you to join the community of freeze dry business owners by hitting the subscribe button. So if you have any comments uh, that you'd like to share about your freeze dry journey or how you've done freeze dry taffy efficiently, or if there's anything else that you'd like to, me to expand on, please let me know in the comments. I hope you have a great rest of the week and the month of January. Let's kick off 2023 and do some awesome things with our businesses. Cheers.